chapter minus 9.9, Speaking Out, by Minot. What was Frank thinking? Everyone turned to stare at him. Sit down, roared Isla, furious that her big moment had been ruined. Um, there's a lot of bullying at Lowood, said Frank loudly. A few students cheered but quickly calmed down lest they suffer for it. I beg your pardon, said the Baroness. There's heaps of bullying here, said Frank. I saw the Blessos hitting someone last week and one of the teachers sent a little girl outside onto a balcony all by herself as punishment. The little girl was frightened and cold. Plus, she didn't even do anything bad. Also, everyone says you're bullying the kids at the centre for making them wear red clothes. It just makes them targets for the thugs. Plus, we should be able to make friends with children at the centre. They're having a hard time. They need friends. Yeah, said some of the students. My mum said that too, called someone from the back. One or two parents nodded, although they looked nervous. Isla was not kind to anyone who didn't do as she wanted, and even parents had been banned from assembly for going against her. I stopped breathing. I was so frightened for Frank, but I was also extremely proud of him. Isla's face looked like it was going to explode. Get out, she shouted. My office, now! Frank shuffled off, shaking his head, staring at the Baroness all the way. There were a few muffled cheers as he left the hall. Isla pointed at Skye. Stand up, she said. Yes, you, Skye Walker, stand up. What a stupid name, by the way. There was a gasp as Isla spoke. She was holding a prize for ending bullying while she was being rude to Sky, I felt sick. Are you grateful to have a uniform? snapped Isla. Something to wear? Something to keep you from the cold? Sky nodded, looking down. Loud voice, please, said Isla. Yes, said Sky, staring blankly at Isla. I thought so. For anyone here who doesn't know, the Thief Family Trust runs a charity that pays living expenses for all the students at the centre. Without that money, they'd be on the street and they'd have no clothes, red or otherwise. No one said anything. So, Miss Walker, said Isla, you and your brother should think yourselves very lucky. Skye nodded and sat down. Did I say you could sit down? asked Isla. No, said Skye. Isla groaned as Skye stood up again. Oh, for goodness sake, sit down. The Blesso boys turned, pulling faces at Skye. My heart started racing. I had to do something. Before I could think long enough to stop myself, I was on my feet with my hand in the air. No, said the Baroness, just no. But it's not fair, I said. You have a prize for stopping bullying and you've just bullied Sky right here in front of everyone. I looked around to see if anyone would agree with me. I did nothing of the sort said the Baroness, clutching her trophy. Students like you and your cousin need to learn some manners. You can go to my office as well. To my surprise, Skye was standing next to me. As she put up her hand, her hair fell out of its clasp and, un and unravelled down her back. Can I go too? she asked in a loud voice. I'd have to say that I agree. This school hasn't ended bullying at all. My brother and I are picked on by the Blesso boys every day. How dare you, asked the Baroness. Get out and fix your hair. I can't find my clasp, said Skye, 
It's somewhere under the chairs. Do you want me to go or fix my hair? Sky sounded calm but defiant. Go, said the Baroness, her face caving in like a leftover party balloon. This place has the worst bullying I've ever seen, said Ben in a loud voice standing beside his sister. Get out, said the Baroness, all three of you, now. With pleasure, called Ben. Chapter Minus Nine, Toby by Minnow. I felt ridiculously happy to be leaving the assembly hall with, with the walkers. I'd finally stood up to Isla. Good on you, whispered some of the seniors as we walked by. Overlord Thieve heard them and stood up, shouting about disrespect. I will not tolerate it, he said. Not from students, not from parents, not from anyone. He shouted so hard that his hat fell off and the younger kids started laughing. Be silent, shrieked Isla from the stage. One of the little boys was still giggling and he yelled out, But his hat fell on my head. Get out, shouted Isla. Now, take him out. Isla pointed at Bug Eye, who grabbed the little boy by the back of his collar and dragged him towards one of the exit doors. We were further back in the assembly hall, but once we got outside, we ran around to the side door where Bug Eye was threatening the little boy with a clenched fist. Stop it, said Ben, glaring at Bug Eye. What you gonna do? asked Bug Eye, giving Ben a menacing look. Report you to the people who, give, who gave you a kindness award, said Skye. Bug Eye scowled. Go to the principal's office, all of you. With that, Bug Eye pushed the little boy at us and sauntered back into the assembly hall. Ben knelt down and gave the little boy a high five. What's your name? he asked. Toby, said the little boy, bursting into tears. Ben lifted Toby up onto his shoulders and his little face beamed. I thought he was going to punch me, said Toby with a big sob. Well, he won't be doing that now, will he? asked Ben, looking up at Toby. No. Sky and I gave Toby high fives. Very brave, I said. The best, added Sky. I'm Minnow, by the way. I'm Sky with an E. I felt as if I'd met her before. It was such a weird feeling. I smiled at her, wishing I'd never had a nightmare about her name. I'm Ben, and I also have an E. We all laughed and then shook hands, and then we laughed again. That Bug Eye doesn't deserve an award for anything, said Skye. He doesn't, said Toby, his little voice shaky. Except maybe for bullying, added Skye, and then laughed. Toby nodded. He's the worst, he said. I hate him. Ben grabbed Toby's legs as they dangled over his chest. Come on, we'll look out for you. We'll be your protectors, said Skye. Toby smiled. Of course we will, I added as we walked along. Will Frank too? asked Toby. Definitely, I said. Frank will think you've been extremely brave. Toby beamed. Is Frank your brother? asked Ben. Cousin, I said. Ben nodded. Thanks for the song, said Skye. Our dad loved that one, said Ben. I shook my head. So sorry about your father. Thanks, said Skye. He would have loved your version. Ben and Sky looked down. My parents love the Master's Apprentices, I said. Sky and Ben smiled, their eyes full of tears. As we walked past the clock tower, I decided that Ben would be a good friend for Frank, and I quietly hoped that Sky might become mine, in spite of Isla's stupid rules. Inside the principal's office sat Frank, looking as casual as you like. There was expensive furniture everywhere, even though Isla liked to say there wasn't enough money for anything. Hey, said Frank, waving as we came in. And who's this? Frank is always kind to younger children. It's his thing. Toby looked shy as he whispered, Toby, what did you do? asked Frank. Nothing, said Toby. He dared to laugh, I said, when Filthy's hat landed on his head. Filthy? asked Ben. Filbert Thieve, said Frank. Phil Thie, get it? 
Ben laughed. Frank gave Toby a high five. So brave, he said. First time in the principal's office? Yes. Toby looked terrified. Don't worry, said Frank. We'll look after you. Toby grinned. Frank smiled, but before he could say anything else, the Baroness arrived, acting as though major crimes had been committed. Sit down, she said, glaring at us with her cartoon blue eyes. Then she looked at Skye and added, No crying from you. Everyone's sick of you, of you blubbering about your dead father. Skye looked down, blushing. What are you doing here? Isla barked at Toby. I... I don't know. Well, get back to class. Toby ran out of the office and didn't look back. When Isla turned to close the door after him, Frank made his eyes go really wide and opened his mouth into a silent scream. Ben started to laugh but stopped when Isla glared at him. How dare you, she asked. Assemblies are not held so that students can be rude to me. As she glowered at us, she looked like a doll that had been left out in the sun too long. There'll be punishment, she said in her horrible, crisp voice. We all looked at the floor, mostly because we felt on the verge of laughter. Everything Isla ever said or did was for show, nothing more. The office door opened and Isla's assistant announced, Overlord Thieve will be in after he finishes his phone call. Filthy muttered Frank. Ben grinned. The overlord does seem rather grubby. Stop muttering, snapped Isla. As Filthy entered the room, he stared at us with his blank grey eyes. I especially hated his lower eyelids. They were always full of goop. He looked so creepy with his faded yellow hair combed over his head. Losers, he said, scowling. I hate losers. You lot can clean the assembly hall from top to bottom. Frank glared at the overlord. We don't have to clean anything, he said. My parents say it isn't safe. What would they know? asked Filthy. Anyway, you won't be cleaning, said Isla. You'll be doing science. The resistance of the mop against the floor. Physics. Pouring disinfectant into hot water. Chemistry. Science, really? asked Frank. The overlord scowled. Don't you dare tell anyone that you think you've been treated harshly. Not a word, added Isla, or your lives won't be worth living. Isla's face suddenly looked so evil. I turned away so that I didn't have to see it. Look at me, she hissed. You think you can turn away when your principal is speaking to you? Your parents might need to teach you some manners, said Filthy, grabbing my arm. Don't touch me, I said, glaring at him. I felt so angry. The overlord will do whatever is required to keep you in check, said Isla in her prim voice. You're being very rude. I sighed, wanting the whole thing to be over. How I hated them. As for you two... Bow saw, said the Baroness, glaring at Skye and Ben. You don't have any parents, so I'll be teaching you manners and science. You can't speak to us like that, said Skye. Isla shook her head. I pay for your keep, she said. I'll speak to you in whatever way I like. Skye looked down. It made me feel sick to see Skye being overpowered by Isla. So, said Isla, I think Bo Saw will be picking up litter. Yes, let's see the two little orphans study the dirty habits of children in the playground. We'll call it sociology. Isla turned to talk to Filthy about exactly what he'd have to do. While they were muttering, I asked Ben, what's Bo Saw? Our initials, whispered Ben. In private, they refuse to use our names. They do it to all the kids at the centre. Quiet, said Isla, grabbing Skye and Ben by their collars, and not a word to anyone about the nature of your punishment. You deserve it for insolence and disobedience, and we're in charge. Got it? 
We all nodded, feeling miserable. I should think so, said Isla. Now, Bo, Saw, come with me. I'll leave these two with you. Filthy grunted. I felt my heart sink.